Choosing the right sports betting platform can be tricky, as most mobile sports betting apps come with limited betting options and customization, delayed cash out and withdrawal times, and tedious customer support, and no true loyalty program with continuous rewards even after signing up. All of this leads to a frustrating, one-sided experience. So, how do you find the one which suits you best? Introducing Zen Sports. It combines the best of both worlds, a traditional sports book and a cutting-edge peer-to-peer marketplace. Zen Sports allows you to accept bets against the house, or use our peer-to-peer -peer marketplace to create your own one-of-a-kind bet and set your own odds without the need for a bookmaker. At Zen Sports, you get more betting options and a cashback rewards through our unique welcome bonus, continuous loyalty program every month, and referral rewards delivered directly into your account. So, what are you waiting for? Download the Zen Sports app today at zensports.com. Welcome to Bluff City Bets, a Bluff City Media podcast. Join Daniel Greer and Chase Bobbitt as they give their plays of the day and strategies for success as a sports better. Now, let's get to the show. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Bluff City Bets presented by Zen Sports on Bluff City Media. Complete coverage of all things Memphis sports. I'm your host, Chase Bobbitt, coming to you with episode 13 of the podcast. Very excited to get into this episode. It is a tough week in the sports betting world. I've seen some people say the worst week in sports betting uh, for the whole year. So we'll make do. We still have some MLS, some tennis, some things to discuss, but not a lot going on. But we're here. Back to the normal Tuesday schedule. As always, Daniel will be with you guys on Friday. So also make sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, and follow us on Twitter at Bluff City Bets. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well to check out all the shows on the Bluff City Media Network. Also, if you are interested in joining our Discord, we have continuously cash plays on there daily. Make sure to message us on Twitter at Bluff City Bets. Ask for the link to get into the Discord. We'll make sure to provide that. I have a nice, um, two nice plays here that we'll touch on in Bad Beats Big Cash that were given um, beforehand on the Discord. So make sure to join us there so you're not missing out on any money, free money, if you will, um, on the Discord. So as always, before we get into it, thank you to Zen Sports, our presenting sponsor, of Bluff City Bets, Zen Sports is a easy to use app. Download it from anywhere, iTunes, Android, wherever you get your apps. Earn an unlimited 5% cash back on your betting volume for the first 15 days that you bet. From that point forward, earn 3% cash back every month unlimited. Make sure to use our code BluffC at sign in. As always, thank you to Zen Sports for being the presenting sponsor of this podcast. A great addition to the Tennessee sports betting community. We are seeing on our Discord now more and more of our big caches on the Discord being Zen Sports bet slips. So people are starting to move over to Zen Sports. It's a great app, great asset in the Tennessee sports betting community, like I just said. So as always, we'll go through our three segments around the league, bad, bad beats, big cash, and then finish it off with our official play. We are now 6-2 and two in our official plays after cashing both teams to score in NYCFC against Charlotte FC. So... We'll start with around the league, as always. And like I said, there's really not much going on. Um, last week in our around the league segment, we did give a women's tennis play at Wimbledon. It was a plus 131 play. Two, one set, plus one and a half sets um, play, and then two money lines for big favorites. That hit at plus 131. So hopefully anyone who listened last week tailed on that and cast a plus 131. This week around the league really – with tennis, it's at the point where there's not much going on for me to talk about now since all the matches, they they go through so quickly. And we obviously don't know who's playing tomorrow um, when you're listening. If you're listening later today, then the games obviously have already finished. Or tomorrow, I, won't, I don't know who's playing yet. So not much on the tennis side of things that I can really discuss today. Um, so we're going to go with MLS. Our, most of our plays over the summer have been MLS just because I'm most comfortable with soccer, as I've said, and MLS is in full swing right now. The only soccer really going on besides the gold cup, which I know I said USA over one and a half goals, um, depending on where you got that play. Some books offer the over one and a half goals to include extra time. Some didn't. 
I know the book that I placed it on did not, so I lost the over one and a half. We chased with USA to win the game or to qualify ultimately when they went down in extra time cashing that. So made the money back there. But if anyone did tail on that, um, just kind of depending on where you got that play, depending on if it hit or missed um, MLS. So I have two matchups that I'm highlighting here to discuss. One of them is one of the, I mean, probably should be one of the most exciting matchups of the year in the MLS besides maybe El Trafico the other day. Um, but this does include one of the El Trafico teams. It is going to be St. Louis FC against LAFC in LA. So St. Louis, obviously a new club, but one of the best clubs in the league already uh, top of the whole table. So top of the whole league table, obviously also top of their conference um, playing against LAFC, who is third in the whole league. And both these teams are dynamic. They score a lot of goals, a lot of fun um, to watch. And I'm looking at this plus 480 at St. Louis money line. Um, I mean, to get a team as good as St. Louis FC is, I know they're on the road. I know that LAFC is one of the most difficult places to play in the ML in the MLS. I'm not saying throw even a whole unit on it, but I think even a half unit play at a plus 480 bet with a team like St. Louis FC is worth a shot. Also, I can look up the tie here. So LAFC is minus 200, which is terrible odds, in my opinion, for a team that could very well lose or tie this game. I, I wouldn't take that. Um, I don't really think there's any value in taking LAFC in this matchup at the minus 200, not even as like a parlay fluffer. Um, I don't see anything there. So looking at the, as I said, the uh, St. Louis FC is currently at plus 480. The draw is at plus 330. I would sprinkle on both of those. LAFC has now gone down to minus 190. So you're in the 100s if that's your threshold. But I would definitely take a shot at both those plays again. And St. Louis FC is a very good road team. We just saw them beat Toronto on the road, um, one of the best road teams in the MLS. So I think you're kind of going to get these two teams meeting each other at the right time to get, I think, again, if you sprinkle on the tie and the money line for St. Louis FC, you cash either way, as long as LAFC doesn't win. And I think that's worth the risk. Just a, a fun play to have there. Watch two very exciting teams go at it in the MLS tomorrow. Also, I'm looking at Houston Dynamo against Minnesota United over two and a half goals. So Houston Dynamo has hit this in three of their last five games. Minnesota has hit this in four of their last five. Both concede over 1.3 goals per game, which is on the higher end in the MLS. Last time they played, I won't take it into account too much. It was 4-0, but it was U.S. Open Cup, which, as we mentioned, those are usually the second teams or reserve players who are playing in that game. So I wouldn't take too much into that. But these are two dynamic, fun teams um, in Houston. We saw Houston beat LAFC 4-0 at home earlier this season. Um, so I think over two and a half rather than both teams to score, just in case something like that does happen. I th made that mistake with Orlando City against RSL last week or uh, over the weekend. Um, Orlando City, as I, I've said multiple times, I normally bet all, all Orlando City games, both teams to score because all their games are just chaos. Um, they ended up losing 4-0. So if you would have just taken the over two and a half goals, RSL – cash that on their own. I know you're taking that risk with that, essentially that third goal, because both teams will score, you can get two goals. Sometimes it is safer to just go over two and a half. So that's what I'm going to do here. Learn from my previous mistakes. And in case either of these teams, uh, assuming that, or the fact that Houston's at home, it would more likely be Houston that won three nil than Minnesota. So Minnesota lose four one on the road to sporting KC, I believe. I know they just lost four one on the road. I don't remember who it was against. So not a great road team. So, I would take the over two and a half rather than both teams to score for that reason. But I think those are two very good MLS plays to keep an eye on. Um, just looking at the remainder of the slate, you have USA also in the Gold Cup. I know we've spoken on the Gold Cup a couple times, so we'll keep with that theme. It's playing against Panama. Um, minus, minus 170 on the money line now that I look. Um, they're minus 450 on the draw no bet. But minus 170 on the money line against Panama, I do think it's worth a risk. Um, they looked good at times against Canada. I think Canada actually played a lot better, which U.S. against Canada is, you could call it, a, a pretty big rivalry in the sense of CONCACAF. Um, so Canada was always going to get up for that game. USA minus 170. It's a bit out of my liking in terms of value play for or at the number for a soccer bet. As I always say, with the draw in there, it kind of makes it difficult. Um, total goals in that game, you have over two and a half of plus 115. 
I would honestly look at both teams to score no and just hope that U.S. kind of packs it in. Um, or I guess you could probably just take um, team props for Panama under 0.5 goals is plus 105. So I think that's a good play. U.S. has looked solid defensively for the most part. Miles Robinson hopefully doesn't play in the next game after what he did against Canada. Uh, essentially gave away two penalties. He got lucky that there was a foul before his handball that ended up getting called back. Um, but then he did ultimately give up a penalty at the end of that game to force uh, extra time. So hopefully Miles Robinson doesn't play. If you have Aaron Long and Matt Mizaga, Mi- 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 uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name in there. I think that U.S. has enough defensively. Plus, plus Matt Turner is one of the best goalkeepers, um, or probably the best goalkeeper in CONCACAF. I think he's truly one of the better goalkeepers in World football is just unfortunate that he he plays at Arsenal and plays behind uh, Aaron Ramsdale, who's also a top goalkeeper. So I like that Panama under 0.5 goals plus 105. So take a look at that. Um, yeah, so it's it's all soccer on around the league. Again, I still think there's value in Wimbledon for the future. If you take uh, Alcaraz, who looked he had shaky moments in his past two matches, but for the most part. I think that he's going to figure it out, and we should get a Jokovic uh, Alcaraz final. And I'll let you know what the he's still at plus three ten, so you're still getting good value with Alcaraz. I think it was plus three fifty last week. Um, I wouldn't take anything else besides that. I will say, actually, um, off the top of my head, looking at Wimbledon tomorrow, since those matchups are out, Chris Eubanks, who is an American um, player, he's plus four hundred tomorrow against Medvedev. So Eubanks beat, he's been plus 200 to plus 300, I think his last three matches. Um, He beat Cam Norrie, who's an English player, had the whole crowd behind him, um, more, you know, specialized on on that surface more, beat him. Then he beat Tistapas, who beat Andy Murray most recently. So if if you watch tennis, and again, I've continuously said I've gotten more and more into tennis to the point where I actually just watch it for fun now, um, just because I enjoy watching it. Um, he's a very fun player. He has a big serve. He can cause guys a lot of problems that other players who may be more finesse style, who who aren't as you – know, and, again, it can – eventually it will, you know, bite him that he plays like that, but he's given a lot of players problems so far. So I think at plus 400, Chris Eubanks is worth, again, a small shot, um, similar to St. Louis Moneyline. Parlay them together for – a quarter of a unit and see what happens. So I think plus 400 for Chris Eubanks is good value. Besides that, I mean, Alcaraz is minus 370 tomorrow against Holger Rune, who Rune actually surprised me in his last matchup um, yesterday. I don't remember who he played, uh, or Dimitrov. He played Dimitrov, who beat Tiafo. Um, Rune, I've always kind of avoided him because he's a head case, and he, if things go wrong, he freaks out. He starts yelling at his coaches, yelling at his mom. I think he kicked his mom out of the uh, the match before that. So Alcaraz, um, I would say Alcaraz in four. I don't know what the prop is on that. Um, could definitely be something. Let's see. Alcaraz, Alcaraz in four is plus 265. So I like that a lot. I think Rune could get a set against Alcaraz. Alcaraz does struggle at times um, on the surface compared to some others also on the um, – with big serves, which we saw Rune hit a couple crazy serve in that last matchup. So I think that's worth a shot um, for Alcaraz plus 265 to win the the match 3-1. So Rune to get a set essentially and then Alcaraz to finish business from there. So that's going to be all for our Around the League segment. Now moving into Bad Beats Big Cash. Um, unfortunately, I really didn't have anything to give on the Bad Beats side until last night uh, where – Again, last night was probably the worst sports gambling day of the year, um, period. So you had the – you essentially had NBA Summer League. You had the Home Run Derby, which Home Run Derby, this is the first year I've really ever watched it. Um, I've seen the memes about Pete Alonzo in the past, and, you know, he's deadlifting before it, um, taking it – you know, meditating, taking it more serious than anyone else. And his over-under – so before that, actually, I will say a big cash, if you will, was – Lewis Robert Jr. over 19 and a half home runs. So this is the Chicago White Sox player. Um, DraftKings did have a good 50% profit boost offered. So I took that, took over one and a half or over 19 and a half home runs for Lewis Robert Jr. 
at like plus 200 was the after the profit boost, what it ended up being. He hit like 26, 27. So hit that easily, feeling good. Try to flip it all on Pete Alonzo over 21 and a half home runs. I think it was at plus 115. Um, the kid for Seattle went first. He had like 41, 40. I think he had 41. Um, crowd was behind it. And my biggest fear with that was that he actually was going, because he went first, he was going to underperform, get to like 20, then Alonzo only needed 21 to win, and then he stopped there. Um, Rodriguez hit 41, like I said, so I was feeling good. Um, Pete Alonzo over 21 and a half home runs. He had 19. He got the one-minute bonus to go, and he had two home runs in the last minute. Um, his dad or whoever was throwing to this guy was throwing sliders, curveballs. I don't know why he was doing this, but he was throwing it away from him. Again, I don't know much about baseball, but I know that for a home run derby, the fact that your pitcher was throwing sliders uh, is, is not ideal. So that was painful because he finished with 21. So the half half home run ended up killing that. Um, a discord play, like I mentioned, and the Lewis Robert one was a discord play. So make sure as I said earlier, to join the Discord because I did put that play in there before it went off. Um, the next Discord play we had was a plus 104 play, but two just good, solid bets that I was very comfortable about. We raised our unit a lot for this one. It was Tyre St. Louis double play minus 275 for St. Louis FC's last game against Toronto, which we mentioned earlier. They ended up winning 1-0. And then it was the Memphis Grizzlies Summer League team minus 220 on the money line against the Chicago Bulls in that first game. Um, again, together plus 104. I was very confident in this play. Um, hit Grizzlies at times were a bit sketchy towards the beginning of that game, but they essentially bring out a whole NBA team. Um, the Grizzlies do just with Laravia, Roddy, um, Junior, even Vince or uh, Williams. Um, these guys played NBA minutes and a uh, Gilliard, um, They've played a lot more NBA minutes than a lot of these summer league teams, so I like the matchup down the stretch against the Bulls. They ended up doing what I expected them to, cashing that, and then St. Louis, again, was really never in question. Um, the tie could have been a play, but they ended up winning the game outright, so not even a bit of a sweat on that end. So those are some good Discord plays. So as, Like I said, make sure to subscribe or join the Discord. If you need the code, message us on Twitter at Bluff City Vets to get into that and, and cash those plays. And before we get into our official play, again, we are six and two on our official play this um in this iteration of the podcast. Zen Sports is the new sports book in Tennessee. Ten, Zen Sports is the new sports book in Tennessee, revolutionizing the way you earn sports betting rewards. That means no more deposit bonuses that turn into deposit nightmares on Zen Sports. What you see is what you get. And with their cash rewards program, you get a lot of cash. For a welcome bonus, earn an unlimited 5% cash back on your betting volume for your first 15 days when you sign up with code BLUFFC. That's right, unlimited 5% cash back. Keep betting and earn. Keep betting and keep earning with up to 3% cash back on your betting volume every month after that. And refer your friends to earn a percentage of their betting volume as cash rewards too. Zen Sports is bringing the cash back to Tennessee. So if you bet big on sports, you want to be betting on Zen Sports. Zen Sports betting just got better. So, as always, thank you to Zen Sports for being the official sponsor of this podcast and getting into our official play. Um, both teams to score in NYC FC versus Charlotte FC. They left it a bit late. I think NYFC scored in like the 80th minute, but really they were knocking on the door the whole time. Once Charlotte got that first goal, I was very confident with NYC FC being at home and chasing the game from that point forward. So they got that, cashing our official play we are going back to both teams to score back to the mls for this next game it is going to be sporting kc against real salt lake both teams to score um i'll let you know what the odds are right now i know it was under the threshold that i gave the minus 180 um so it is going to be currently listed at if we can find it both teams, the score is currently listed at minus 165 for both, um, Sporting KC against Real Salt Lake. So RSL has hit this in three of their last five games. Again, like I mentioned about the Orlando City game, scored four goals in that game. They've been one of the better teams in the MLS as of recently. Dynamic attack, good defense. Um, so I like that. And they've scored in five straight games on their own. So the only two games in the both teams to score category that didn't hit for them, it wasn't them who didn't hold up their end of the bargain. 
And then for Sporting KC, they've hit it in it. They've hit both teams to score in three of their last five games, scored in four of five games. So both of these offenses score goals, exciting teams. It is going to be in Sporting KC, which bodes well for Sporting KC, who is the worst of the two teams, in my opinion. So they're getting the home home crowd boost to go with the um, maybe less talented players. So I like that. Both teams will score a minus 165 as our official play. And that is going to be all for this episode. So thank you guys, as always, for listening. Make sure to check out the podcast on Friday with Daniel, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. In the meantime, happy betting. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you guys then. Thank you for listening to Bluff City Bets. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of all things Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.